I'm speeding. I arrived two days ago to Bordeaux. It's my first time here. And you people are amazing. You can dance, you can sing, you are very nice people. But let me ask you a question. Who can read the future here? You can raise your hands. I mean, don't be shy. If you can read the future, just raise your hands. You, you can. Next year, you come on stage now, okay? I have to admit something. I cannot read the future. And I know you are disappointed. Okay? I'm supposed to talk about the future of education or the future of technology and education, and I cannot read the future. So whatever I will say here, if I try to imagine the future, will be obsolete in five minutes, ten minutes, maybe one week. So I will talk about something else. I will still talk about the future of technology and education, but I want to give you the key questions to be asked to create a powerful future in education, to create a future in education that makes sense for us as professors, as academic directors, and also as students. Okay? So let's get started if this works. And okay, don't really need it anyway. But the idea here is don't forget that we live in a world post COVID. Okay, I guess Portland is an amazing place, but you had COVID as well, sadly, like everyone. So we need to take into account that we are in a world post COVID. And this will have an impact. I mean, since we had the COVID, education changed. Okay? So we had a future with uh, no COVID, and now we have a future with, with COVID. Okay, so the idea here is really that we need to take this into account. A few weeks back, I was talking to one of my students, and he was telling me, oh, you know why? Since COVID is over, all the classes should be on campus. I hate online classes. And I was like, okay, my poor kid, if you don't like online education, if you don't like technology into education, you will have to go to another planet. Okay, so it will not be your place. We have no choice than to study online, we have no choice than to use education and to use technology in education. Okay, so here, I will be happy maybe. Uh, yeah. Very good. And so I said to my students if you don't adapt, like all the animals, and humans, we are animals. That's maybe not a, a news for you, you will disappear. Professors who will not use technology in the future will disappear. Students who don't know how to use in innovation and technology will probably be bad students. Okay? If we talk about technology, maybe outside we have four things, four technologies that you probably heard about, maybe you don't know what it is. We have augmented reality, we have virtual reality, we have uh, artificial intelligence, and we have the metaverse. So what is augmented reality? Augmented reality, imagine that you, it's this, okay? It's better to put the picture when it works than 1,000 words. So the idea here is really, imagine you look at your screen, your screen is two dimensions. So you see a castle in two dimensions. Let's, you, let's imagine you study architecture, or you study geography, or you study history. Isn't it better to look at it like this? Isn't it more meaningful for the students as well? So that is an augmented reality. So being here today with me, and I know you are very happy, you would be at home with a mask, and you see this in three dimensions. And I will be in three dimensions as well. And it's not yourself there, but it's uh, an avatar. So it's a representation of yourself. So in my case, I would be taller, I would be stronger, and I would be smarter you can choose, so it's, it's perfect. Frankly speaking, I prefer to be here today with you. It's your fault, if I do. Okay. So the third one is the metaverse. The metaverse, all of you heard about it. In simple terms, the metaverse is, instead of being here today with me, and I know you're very happy, you would be at home with a mask, and you see this in three dimensions. And I will be in three dimensions as well. And it's not yourself there, but it's uh, an avatar, so it's a representation of yourself. So in my case, I would be taller, I would be stronger, and I would be smarter, because you can choose, so it's, it's perfect. 
try to speak at different degrees here today with you than on the metaverse. It's way better. Artificial intelligence in education would be something like robots doing things for you. So for instance, instead of correcting exams as professors, a robot will correct the exams for you. If you have professors here, they know the feeling correcting exams is the worst part of the job. Okay. This is for the technologies available. Again, I cannot read the future, so maybe in two years, if I do again this presentation, I will present four new technologies and not those ones. So what I want to show you here is, this question you should ask me all the time. What's the purpose of what we do? Okay, so you are college uh, students. I struggle a lot with math, mathematics at college. And then I studied finance, so there is hope. But why do I struggle with, uh, with mathematics? It's because my professors, I will not say the names, tell me the concepts, the formulas, and then why I was learning in that. So they said, oh, let's learn Pythagoras. Okay, nice. For what? So that's why explaining the why is key here. And then the question is, why should we use technology? Just to be fancy, just because it looks good. And we see what happens sometimes with technology. Okay? So the idea is to use technology with purpose and to always ask why. And I will give you another example from the business world. You have a company called SpaceX that you probably all know here. And if you don't know SpaceX, you definitely know Elon Musk. So SpaceX, basically what they do is they want to send people on Mars, on another planet. Okay. And so there was a journalist who went to SpaceX and he asked to a person cleaning the devices, or the premises as well, and he said, what's your job? And the guy said, I'm helping humanity to go faster on another planet. So the journalist was like, okay. This guy, this guy is on drugs. And then he said, no, no, look, my manager told me that if I use, if I clear the premises well, the engineers will be happier. They will spend more time and therefore, we will go sooner and faster to Mars, to another planet. Okay, I will use all the mics at uh, TED College today. Uh, sorry for that. So you see the limitation of technology. This was not part of the show, okay? But still, we will try to continue. What happens if we don't ask why we do things? And this is something that I want you to, to understand here. Everybody has a mobile phone here. Maybe you can show me your mobile phone. Go ahead. Good. I have one as well. So professors are not too badly paid. They have a mobile phone as well. Okay. What's the issue with this? Do you remember the Nokia 3310? The Nokia old with the snake. Everybody has the best score on the snake. What happened since that time? We keep adding technology. We keep adding features, etc., etc., etc. And I guess we all have parents or grandparents here, and you see this lady and you give her the last iPhone 13 or 14, 14, whatever. Does she really need this? Probably not, okay? So this is what we call the segment zero. The segment zero is persons who don't need, don't want, or don't know how to use technology. Then why do we give a mobile phone like this to a lady like that? I took the example of a new person could be someone else. Okay. When actually what she needs, and the need is this, a simple phone to give phone calls and to send messages. She doesn't want to watch Duali on YouTube. Okay. So if you take a recent example, if I say Madonna, you will understand that I'm very old. Okay. So that's why I took this one. This is what we call the segment zero. Okay. This is a very good way to launch new businesses, by the way. If everybody is fighting to have more and more technological phones, the segment zero coming back to simple things, you are alone in your market. Bad use of technology will lead to this. And then I will be positive, don't worry. It's not like a, a very bad tool, very negative, and then you all cry. Here, like inequalities in learning, we are not equal in life, we are not equal in learning. Some people have 
disabilities, some people are deaf, they cannot hear anything, some people are blind, some people have uh, concentration and focus difficulties. Okay? The second one is accessibility. If you want to do classes online, what do you need? Internet. Do we have internet everywhere? So even in Barcelona, where I live, you have some regions where you have no internet. Therefore, if you ask someone to go to a class online, it's going to be difficult. And the last one is the increase of the social gaps. If you have money, if you can pay for education, you will have probably a better education. And the gap keeps increasing. The programs got more and more expensive. The housing and the life got more and more expensive. So every year that you wait to go to a top school or a top university, the prices are increasing. And a bad use of technology will lead to this. Okay? If people need to buy VR masks or VR casks and they don't have the means, they will be in disadvantage compared to the others. The misuse of technology after the, after the old data, I want to show you this. Let's imagine you are in the class and you have a blind person. That happened to me. And you say, oh, do the exercise, and I want you to watch the Giza pyramids on uh, virtual reality. It makes absolutely no sense. We agree on this. The person cannot see, so she, can, she cannot or he cannot connect on the virtual reality. Again, people with no internet. Okay? If I, I'm traveling, can I connect? That would be another of the issues. And this is something that we all felt during the pandemic, feeling alone. And when you study online, or when you study only with technology, you feel alone. Sometimes, uh, professors always feel alone, but when you study online and you study with technology, you feel alone. That's the worst picture I found, but uh, that's it. Education is a human right. And actually, technology should come after the persons. Persons should always be alone. More important. And then technology, if it makes sense, if we explain the why, we can have technology. This is one of the um, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. The objective of this is that by 2030, we should achieve this. Access to quality education for everyone. And here I will still be a bit negative, okay? So we will not manage to do it. By 2030, we will not manage to do it. Does it mean that we should stop working on it? No, each day that we lose, we will keep delaying the achievement of this objective. When you use technology with a purpose, this is what happens. Increase of the inclusivity, so people who have disabilities, trouble in learning, can participate and can learn better. You will have an increase of access to education, people from remote areas. I go a lot to South America, you have people who live at 10 hours by bus or 10 hours by horse from the city. So accessibility to education. The only difference, and this is my opinion, but I hope you share it, the only difference between two persons, no matter the origin, the religion, whatsoever, is education. That's why if you give access to education and you're inclusive, people will grow up. And again, people should come before the technology. So those are the questions that in 10 years, you can keep asking yourself, if I do a talk about the future of education, in two weeks, it's over. You, can, you will watch it just to say, oh, this guy was nice. But here you can use it in the future for, for, for the use of technology in education. And this is the thing that you can achieve. And this is a real, a real stuff. I work a lot with refugees. And education can take refugees and poor people out of poverty. I always say that education is a weapon to fight against poverty. You can also have, and I have students like this who have audition troubles, or now they can use Zoom so they can see the subtitles. When I speak with a very strong French accent, they can understand my English, so that's perfect. Okay. And then, just to, to finalize here and to conclude, obviously I came to Bordeaux, I told you, having a, a lot of fun and very nice place to be, but the objective was to come from Barcelona to here, not to talk about the future of it but to talk to the future of education. And sorry the parents, but I look at the kids here. You are the future of education. As students, as individuals, maybe future parents, and maybe as future professors, who knows? It's a beautiful, beautiful job. And now the call is really yours. 
what will you do with this? Will you use technology with a purpose? Will you use technology to take people up, to take them out of poverty, to make it accessible to everyone and uh, to, be, to be fair in education? And I want to finalize with two sentences here. The first one is from Alpha Amelina. The best way to create the future, the best way to know the future is to create it. And just one thing, if you do nothing, the future will arrive again. So the future will not wait for you. The second sentence is, remember that the hours pass very slowly, especially when you're in class, but the years pass very fast. So now it's your call. To have an impact on the future, it's always better to start today. Thank you. And actually, technology should come after the persons. Persons should always be before. More important. And then technology, if it makes sense, if we explain the why, we can have technology. This is one of the um, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. The objective of this is that by 2030, we should achieve this. Access to quality education for everyone. And here I will still be a bit negative. Okay, so we will not manage to do it. By 2030, we will not manage to do it. Does it mean that we should stop working on it? No. Each day that we lose, we will keep delaying the achievement of this objective. When you use technology with a purpose, this is what happens. Increase of the inclusivity, so people who have disabilities, trouble in learning, can participate and can learn better. You will have an increase of access to education, people from remote areas. I go a lot to South America, you have people who live at 10 hours by bus or 10 hours by horse from the city. So accessibility to education. The only difference, and this is my opinion, but I hope you share it, the only difference between two persons, no matter the origin, the religion, whatsoever, is education. That's why if you give access to education, you are inclusive, people will grow up. And again, people should come before the technology. So those are the questions that in 10 years, you can keep asking yourself. If I do a talk about the future of education, in two weeks, it's over. You, can, you will watch it just to say, oh, this guy was nice. But here you can use it in the future for, for, for the use of technology in education. And this is the thing that you can achieve. And this is a real, a real stuff. I work a lot with refugees. And education can take refugees and poor people out of poverty. I always say that education is a weapon to fight against poverty. You can also have, and I have students like this who have audition for us, or now they can use Zoom so they can see the subtitles. When I speak with a very strong French accent, they can understand my English, so that's perfect. Okay. And then, just to, to finalize here and to conclude, Obviously, I came to Bodrum, I told you, having a, a lot of fun and very nice place to be, but the objective was to come from Barcelona to here, not to talk about the future of education, but to talk to the future of education. And sorry, the parents, but I look at the kids here. You are the future of education. As students, as individuals, maybe future parents, and maybe as future professors, who knows? It's a beautiful, beautiful job. And now the call is really yours. What will you do with this? Will you use technology with a purpose? Will you use technology to take people up, to take them out of poverty, to make it accessible to everyone and uh, to, be, to be fair in education? And I want to finalize with two sentences here. The first one is from Alpha Amelina. The best way to create the future, the best way to know the future is to create it. And just one thing, if you do nothing, the future will arrive again. So the future will not wait for you. The second sentence is, remember that the hours pass very slowly, especially when you're in class, but the years pass very fast. So now it's your call. To have an impact on the future, it's always better to start today. Thank you.